facilities and there's a lot of focus. <laughs> Thanks for starting with that. <laughs> Obviously, you need to clean it up, and that's that's 100% on me. Uh, I thought we played with an unbelievable effort level, uh, great determination, great desire. Now we need to play with a little bit more discipline. Uh, a couple of those things, uh, the officials probably said that they wouldn't have been called in some other situations, and so we'll, we'll get that solved from that angle. But certainly from our standpoint, we needed to, to finish drives in the fir ha first half, uh, offensively got, got stubbed our own toe with, with some silly penalties, and then put our defense on a short field with a couple of, of you know, plays that are, that are weird, uh, but absolutely have to, to clean that up going forward. That was really uncharacteristic of your, of your team uh, absolutely. so far. Was there a message at halftime? There were many messages throughout the game. Yes. Yeah, we have. I mean, that's not who we are. Uh, a couple of them, I mean, we're, you know, Drew Howell, I would let marry my daughter, and he was confused and <laughs> hit a guy late, you know, and I believe him. And, and that's kind of what happened. A couple of the other things uh, we'll, we'll fix, absolutely. What wasn't working for Byron today? Marshall. What wasn't working for Byron today? I don't know what that means. It seemed like 15 carries. First two questions are good ones. Penalties and what, what's wrong with Byron Marshall? Byron Marshall is a, is a great tailback. And, you know, uh, it's an 11-man job of running the football. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Byron Marshall. Uh, we could have put him in there at the end to, you know, pad those stats. But he knows that his football team won today. He didn't have bad stats today. His football team won today. Coach, how big is it for you guys in a game like this where teams are kind of feeling each other out to get that 71-yard touchdown run that says, yeah, we can do it against these guys? Um, you know, so much at the beginning, we knew that they weren't going to play us how they played BYU, and they didn't. They played us kind of completely differently, and we sort of anticipated some of that, uh, some of that stuff. We, we made some changes on the fly, uh, and our guys did a great job of, of to use your phrase, feel, feel them out. Um, but that's, that's a good football team. It's the tallest, I think that's the tallest football team I've ever seen in my life. They're huge. Uh, but, uh, you know, we had to, to just be on point in terms of communication, identifying what they, they were doing to, 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 you know, try to stop us. And our guys, for the most part, did a good job of that. What does it say, does it say about them if they were a good football team that you just beat them 59 to 10? What does it say about you guys? Well, it's it's number two. That's what it says. You know, it's and nothing more, nothing less. You know, we play another great program next week. Uh, our our flight will be short going back. It'll feel short, um, and and start preparing for Tennessee tomorrow. Uh, but the only thing it you know it does when you win is it gives you a chance to have one more. You know, and 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 one one and is good. Two and is a little bit better. And and now we need to have a great Sunday in recovery and get rolling. You talked all week about the D tackles and you went right at them with that play with Marcus. If something did in that situation, you thought maybe there'd be a hole there? Well, those guys, man, as advertised up front, I thought they were outstanding. I think that defense is, is, is really good. Um, you know, we had some guys that, that play in particular, one of them where we kind of got a step and got the rest of the guys leaning. Uh, it was just something that we thought we had a shot to, to kind of spread the field and let, let Marcus, let Marcus go and try to use their, you know, kind of their aggression against them. And, and they, uh, they're very, again, I think that's a very talented team. As a staff, how do you determine how you want to use the Anthony Thomas all the time? And do you plan on changing it up every week? We do, <laughs> and if we told you, we'd have to kill you. So we can't. We can't. But um, we want the ball in his hands, and uh, we, we're trying to make a concerted effort from from the, you know, first play to try to create some, again, some space. Uh, whether it's the screen game or as a receiver, as a movement guy, but he likes to be that that guy, you know, kind of a moving target. Um, but we, we need the ball in his hands, and yeah, we, we talk about it all the time of ways and and and. Uh, you know, ways to move him, ways to line him up, to, to get him the ball. I know that the Anthony I, Thomas is back in the hallway. I Perfect. Know, you said you don't you kind of twenty carries is about his limits as far as the running back goes. Just overall, as far as responsibility, how much do you think he can handle? I don't know. I've said before. You know, when asked that, you never want to be able to answer that question because he's hurt. <laughs> you know, and and uh, it's kind of like how many how many pitches can the right hander throw? I don't. You know, you don't want to get to that magic number when he needs the Tommy John surgery, but. Uh, uh, we need to get him the ball. He's a great player, and and you know going back. And I'm not trying to be smart about Byron Marshall, but at some point someone's not going to have the ball in our offense, and sometimes we'll throw it, and sometimes we'll run it, and that's where somebody else needs to, to pick up the slack. Were they over pursuing a little bit on the running back on those inside runs because they were stuffing pretty good early with the defensive tackles, which is why I think they took advantage of 
Marcus making that run. Were they over-pursuing or were the guards missing some assignments? What was going on with those early run stuff that was happening inside? Are you saying for, from our standpoint, were from, we well, from over- From their standpoint, were they overplaying the running backs on, that, on those reads? Or Why were they like successful somebody, against your inside zone? The inside early. zone was stuck I think they've got a great defensive line. Uh, very stout front guys. They, they moved a lot, and we were trying to give them some, some different looks. Um, uh, but, you know, we thought if, if, if we stayed with our, our plan, we'd, we'd be okay in the end. What did Thomas Tyner show you just a few touches today? Natural runner. Man, he, I thought that zone cut on the, uh, his longer touchdown, I thought that was a really – it was a natural cut. Guys kind of have that or they don't. That's not something – Gary Campbell's an unbelievable running back coach, but you can't – you can't teach that feel uh, and that kind of angle uh, that he took, and so that that's encouraging. Mark, how encouraged were you by the way your team handled the travel? That's a long trip Great. you guys usually make. Yeah, very. They were very good with that. Again, that's that's why it was just frustrating with the, the penalties. I thought we were. I thought we handled everything great except some silly penalties, and that's gonna that's gonna haunt us against different people, um, and could have haunted us today. But all in all, uh, we need to finish it up the right way on our way home, and and and. Get ready for, for a lot of game three. One, a lot of penalties is one thing to get five, 15-yard penalties in the first mm -hmm. half. How much more concern is that for just having less of the Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, a couple of those I think were interesting, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't mean that. I'm not arguing them. I'm, it, it's, they're, they're, you know, they were called. And that, so we're going to certainly address them, and I, and I did address them. And, and, you know, we talked about a halftime. We played with – Incredible desire. We need to play with incredible desire and discipline, and that's that's not something that we're ever going to stand for or be about. Is is those kind of penalties? Uh, you know, all those guys are coming over and apologizing to me, and you know, it doesn't help us now. But, you know, right after it happens, and, and so that that'll be fixed. You had a couple of moments where you had like guys that come on the Aronis 20, 25 yards downfield blocking on some pass plays. Did you do that anymore? Or am I just dense enough that I haven't noticed it as much last week? On pass plays. Yeah, that okay. would have Braylon, been another penalty. Braylon had a touchdown where Hamani was like... Yeah, Braylon had the screen. That was yeah, a screen, right. uh, and, and Hamani did a great job getting out and, and leading the way. Uh, but that's what we need those guys to do. They need to run and just, just be big, run through guys, make them, make them change, make the defender change direction and get our guy in space. Uh, and, and he had a great uh, uh, job on that screen. Hironis Grass, who had an incredible cut on uh, DeAnthony's touchdown, kind of towards the, the Grass Hill end. Uh, so those guys, you know, need to keep doing what they're doing and eliminate a couple penalties. Second straight game, Marcus had over 100 yards on the ground. You talked about the preseason about wanting to have him make more big plays this year and be a playmaker. How much more of an emphasis have you wanted to have him make plays with his feet? Um, it's not really been, I guess, an emphasis more, but but just uh, done a couple of different things um, that that turned out that way. Like the the quarterback draw uh, was something that kind of came up because of, of how Virginia aligned to that particular formation, and so that's something where we're going to pick our spots and and try to have him, you know, make some hay.